Hello, everybody, and welcome to Prop Live on this glorious Thursday afternoon here in sunny Seattle. Uh, this is a show we do every week where we uh, answer your prop and costume making questions. This week we have a guest, a buddy of mine from down in Southern California, Mr. Steve Winsett. Hey, Steve. Hello, Internet. Hi. H how is it down there? How you doing? You guys got enough water? It is really hot right now. Mm. It's about 100 degrees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it just started, like, two days ago, where it's like, oh, by the way, we're just, it's summer, so that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, you know, no water, it's hot. It's <laughs> Everyone, still a regular day in California. Animals, just, uh, birds just spontaneously combusting out of the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you go outside and people are kind of walking their dogs. It's more like yeah. they're just letting their dogs sit on the sidewalk. <laughs> just hot. I will say uh, one of the major benefits of working in my basement, it is 68 degrees in my basement right now, which is oh. fantastic. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, hey, everyone. Steve here uh, is a uh, dude what makes things. In fact... Steve uh, lives out in LA because he makes stuff for them for the moving pictures I've been hearing so much about. <laughs> the movies. Yeah. St oh, do you have a, a good uh, list of some of the things you've worked on that people might be impressed by? I do. I, I actually was going to bring up my IMDb real quick just because I can't ever remember it. I will. I will do that right now. <laughs> um, all the Hunger Games films. Oh, cool. What sort oh. of stuff did you do on those ones? Uh, I did mainly anytime anybody died. Yeah. So you um, killed a lot of people. Yeah, I killed a lot of people. That sounds weird. Um, for the last uh, movie, I don't know if any spoilers. I guess there's a scene with a bunch of bodies. Those are all mine. Those are all your bodies. Those are you all, just all like to all keep a collection of bodies around. Yeah. Yeah, this is quite a. If folks look up uh, Steve Winsett on IMDb, you'll see a a laundry list of wonderful uh, movies you've probably seen Steve work on. Thank you. Yeah, and then uh, I worked on mainly makeup effects and special effects most of the time, and then I do some costume stuff. Like I was on uh, Thor and uh, Tron Legacy in the costume department doing the specialty costumes. Oh, cool! So Anything. That was pretty fun. Did you do any of the uh, glowing stuff for the Tron? I know I get asked about that all the time. I wish I did. Yeah. Uh, because it was a really cool technology that they developed. And it was funny because two different shops were developing it. Um, it was really cool in the end because it was very flexible, very uh, durable LED systems that were very light. Cool. You know, uh, I mainly was like, hey, this has to be foam fabricated at the last minute kind of guy. Yeah. That sounds that sounds like a familiar story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just make it out of foam? We'll just make it right here out of foam. Lots of L200. Awesome. I like that L200. Well, cool. Anything you uh, is there anything you're working on right now that you could talk about? Or? I mean, right now I'm on Grey's Anatomy and mm -hmm. Scandal. More more dead people. More dead people. Yeah. You're getting um, it kind of like, uh, <laughs> hey, we need someone to get a phone call. We need someone to make dead guys. Oh, Steve's our guy. Is that, your, uh, yeah. is that your thing? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I just got done on a movie called Officer Down, which is based on a comic book that I haven't read, but it's about a, a cop that never dies. Oh. Well, he dies, and they bring him back to life. So a lot of a – lot, and it's just ultra-violent, grindhouse style, which was really fun. Um I like a good mix of, like, the crazy fun, like, horror movies and the very technical, like, Benjamin Button, where everything has to be very pristine. Mm -hmm. So. Super cool. Uh, well, folks who are watching at home, we got a pile of people <laughs> coming on in. Uh, just FYI, if you go to PunishProps.com slash live, that's where the chat is. We've got a pretty sweet chat thing going on on IRC if you want to join in and chat with everyone else who's watching. Um, and then if you have questions to ask me or Steve, by the way, you should ask Steve because he knows way more about this stuff than I do, <laughs> uh, submit those. If you go to the event page for this live hangout, there's a thing there, a Q&A app where you can submit your questions and ask your prop and costume making questions to either of us and we will answer them. Uh, so yeah, get on that. Bring your <laughs> get on that right now. Do it. 
Uh, I'll tell you what I've been working on. I started working on a gun. Go figure, a space yeah. gun. That's kind, of, that's kind of what people are like, hey, I need a space gun. Oh, we'll yeah. call Bill. That's kind of my thing. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited because, I, A, I get to go to San Diego Comic-Con. For, which is awesome. Which is pretty cool. And, yeah. B, I get to go there because I'm building a gun for the guys at Tested. Uh, very Norm. awesome. Yeah, Adam and Jamie and Will and Norm and Joey. I don't want to forget the camera guy, Joey. He's awesome. Uh, th- I'm building a gun from District 9, and I just started cutting out the wood today, which means I have a lot of work to do in the next three weeks to get it finished. <laughs> Um, but that's pretty cool. I've, I'm testing out some new muscles. I've started learning SketchUp. If uh, those of you watching at home are looking to get into like CAD or 3D modeling or drawing and you want a good free program that'll get you going, uh, go try SketchUp. There's a free version that is fantastic. Give that a try. Uh, in fact, oh, I didn't post this on my uh, on my live page. I'll do it. Thing. I'll show people my drawing that I did, my 3D drawing. There it is. Ta-da! So that's the gun. It's the rifle from uh, from me, uh, Desk 9. That's awesome. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. I like it. I like space guns. I think I'm going to be drawing more and more. Before we started, Steve and I were talking about different 3D programs. You were looking into AutoCAD. AutoCAD and Rhino. Rhino yeah. seems to be everywhere. Um, yes, it does. I just got done at a model shop, and they do a lot of 3D printing, a lot of CNC, a lot of laser cutting, and they do everything in Rhino. Mm -hmm. And then for the 3D, they'll push it over to Maya, or they'll push it over to AutoCAD for the laser cutter. But really, everything starts in Rhino and works its way out. Cool. So that's one of those, that's what I should learn, because it seems like everybody else uses it. Right. I think uh, more importantly, though, if people are looking to get into that realm, any... 3D software package that you start to get familiar with, there's a lot of concepts that translate between them. Totally. So, so for example, I um, I trained on Maya for years and years. Yeah. That was my jam. Uh, going between Maya and 3D Studio Max is fairly trivial, especially now since they're both owned by Autodesk. Uh, but then picking up uh, SketchUp was pretty quick because I do yeah. have a background in AutoCAD, and I kind of get the whole 3D modeling thing. I understand how Booleans work. <laughs> uh, uh, so if anyone's looking to get started, any anything if you get proficient in them will help you get good at Rhino or whatever. Yeah. So, so again, again, do it. You have no excuses. There's yeah, free software. It. It's free. It's out there. Just yeah. No excuses. Like when I was going to college back in a long time ago, when there were no free options. No it's, sir. It's funny because so many people in my industry for the longest time were like, you know, screw CG and Anybody that you know learns that stuff, you're you know betraying the industry and blah blah blah. But now it's come to, if you don't know your way around that stuff, you're just missing out. Yeah. You know. And that's how that's how I feel too. Like, um, everything I've done so far for prop making has been like scroll saw, bandsaw, sander, like very traditional stuff, yeah. drawn out basically by hand. You, like I use Inkscape, but it's basically by hand. Yeah. Um. And I feel like there's I'm just on the cusp of a world of of being really really productive with the stuff that I do, especially now that I have a laser cutter and a CNC yeah. mill that's still in pieces, but I'm going to put it together <laughs> soon. Uh, once I get those things incorporated into my normal workflow, and it's not and the barrier to entry for those things isn't outside of the range of the hobbyist either. Not you know, at all. We we're talking about that CNC mill for like the base model of that thing. I think is like seven hundred bucks. That's not. That's not that bad. Yeah. Um, once I get that incorporated into my normal workflow, it's going to change how I do everything. I still end up with a physical finished prop when I'm done, but just how I got there was quicker and more accurate. And yeah, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a brave new world out there. Exciting. Well, I mean, like uh, even the the wood parts that you've done for that gun so far, you could have done on the X car, but like mm-hmm. you said, time constraints. Yes, you know? if it was put together. <laughs> but instead, I use a, a here. Here's the thing: I use a combination of saws to get yeah. there. So, but uh, soon, but soon. For any uh, tool nerds out there, Bill and I were talking before we started about the X Carve machine, which yeah. Harrison over at Vulpin Props got one, and it's just been the I really need that in my life. Yeah, 
Yeah, you do. Uh, we'll definitely have a link in the show notes to the X Carve so people can go check that out. Yep. Um, all right. Well, cool. Why don't we get started and grab some questions from everyone? Cool. Uh, otherwise, we could just keep talking about tools for the next yeah. hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's one from one of our regulars from Fearless Assad. He says, if I wanted to form a clear acrylic visor for a prop helmet without access to a vacuum form machine, what would you recommend? Hmm. Mm. That's tough. Yeah. Because visors usually just equal vacuum form. Yeah. You can see uh, if a company like MakeMasterCar.com uh, carries it, carries the shape you already need. Or but something if it's a close. Custom shape, you know, if it's a custom shape, you're probably going to look at using some sort of heat-shaped object. Um, yeah, it's hard to find anything that's not cast and not vacuum form for a custom clear shape. Right. Uh, I just looked up visors on uh, McMaster Car, and most of the stuff they have there is safety stuff. Yeah, it's not that fantastic. You can get a lot of different types of motorcycle visors. Uh, my Judge Dread helmet, um, I put a mo actually it's a motorcycle helmet or visor that's upside down, so right. it's a straight line across the bottom. Okay. But it worked. Um, it depends on the application. Generally, yeah. when you're talking visors, you either have uh, a perfectly custom-made visor that fits the thing you're trying to make that you vacuum formed, or you get something close that's pre-made. Yeah. Out of the two. Now I thought. found. Um, I just did a Boba Fett helmet, and the visor that came with that was just flat, uh, clear, like vacuum form. That I guess it was like a clear styrene that mm -hmm. you could heat shape a little bit and get some nice curves out of it. Yeah, but for anything more complicated than that, it's better to probably find something that's precast, yeah. like a motorcycle visor. Yep, I will say that um, it's not like super duper hard to build a, a vacuum form machine. It is not. So you may look into that world. Um, I mentioned this before, but Fawn Davis has a, a vacuum form video on the Stan Winston School page. Yeah. Uh, he, that's all. I think he's making a helmet or something in the whole series, but the part one is make, building a small vacuum form out of like a toaster yep. oven. So yeah. So consider that. Uh, I've actually I just got done working with Fawn, and I've seen his his homemade built vacuum form machine, and it works wonders to this day. Oh yeah, yeah, you know? totally, totally. All right, cool. Well, good luck, fearless Assad, uh, with your visor. All right, next question. This one comes from another regular. Goes by the name Don't Try This at Home. Hmm. Uh, here. It's not Adam Savage, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> hey, fellas, if each of you had to start over from scratch with no shop and just a basement or garage full of crap, how long do you think it would take for you to get up off the ground and have a light duty shop put together? Um, depends on the budget, really. Yeah. It's all about <laughs> how, much, uh, how much cash, really. You know. Yeah. Uh, and it also, I mean, starting from scratch is kind of, uh, it's hard to say, like, what it means to start from scratch. Like, if my entire shop burned down, I could probably move into an apartment and just double my efforts on my books and live off of that while yeah. I rebuild my shop. Right. And really, like, there's a, a couple of things that, you know, if I lost everything it's and I still needed to make things, I would totally look at the bare essentials, you know, which would like be like an X carve. <laughs> yeah, like an X carve. Yeah, the bare essentials. You know, a bear, a bandsaw, a Dremel, stuff like that, and go from there. Right, know? and and if it if money was tight too, because um, I'm rebuilding my life, I could <laughs> get a handful of those things uh, used probably yeah. for a yep. couple hundred bucks. And then uh, there's a lot of places now, uh, the like maker spaces that you can just basically have run of their shop right. for a, a small amount of cash on a day rate, you know? Yeah. Um, there's places called, I know when I was in um, uh, San Jose for Big Wow Comic Fest, they have a yeah. place there called Tech Shop. I've heard yep. of a couple of those. And it's got a whole bunch of different stuff there, including just like normal power tools Yeah. Um, that you can take advantage of. So if I needed to just, to just get up and running again, that might be a good alternative too. Yeah, where it's just, okay, I need this, you know. Uh, I've gone to a place called Vocademy that is kind of the same deal. And it's mm -hmm. one of those, like, I just plan everything ahead where I'm like, I need this, this, and this. 
real quick, and I think that'd be my first start if I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I would go to one of those places and figure out what I need to use and go from there. Yep. Uh, The other thing, too, since I, like, technically neither one of us would be starting from scratch because we both have resumes, right? Yeah. I could even go try and get a job at, like, a, a local technical school. Yeah. And then have access to their shop. Yep. And then I'd be making money, and I could use all their stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear a lot of people, um, uh, their shop that they have is basically whatever their their job has. Yeah. Um, I know my, my twin brother, when he was, uh, he was working at a high school, he's a high school teacher, they have a wood shop there. So he would stay after school and, like, build Iron Man stuff yeah. in the wood shop because they already have the tools there. Yeah. And I'm sure there's there's people we knew that we could be like, hey, can I come over and use your, your bandsaw for yeah. 20 minutes, you know? Yeah. I'll come over with a six-pack of beer and we'll, you know, figure yep. it out. Yep, I, I, already, I already do that anyway. My buddy has a nice vacuum form table, so I just show yeah. up here in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I build one? He comes <laughs> over here to use my laser, I go over there to use his, uh, yeah, his, his vacuum, vacuum form. form. There you go. Um, so there. You, uh, thank you. Don't try this at home. There's some good suggestions for you. If that question comes from people looking to start that have no money, I always recommend just getting something small and making something small, mm-hmm. like small wins. You know. Yeah. Go to Michaels, get some clay, get some tools. You know, go from there. You mm-hmm. know, and work your way up. Or uh, I always recommend the Stan Winston School. Yeah. I should be a spokesmodel by now because I'm always <laughs> like, that's the first thing you do is go. Get their subscription and pick a project you like and go for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And they'll give you a list of everything you need, and it's usually not a lot, you know. Right. Cool. So. All righty. Let's grab another one here. We got, by the way, folks, lots going on in the chat right now. Um, people are talking about, like, stuff they bought for pretty... This guy, uh, Second Nature Effects, says he found a $1,000 table saw for around 300 bucks used on Craigslist. That's amazing. So look around, totally. Yeah. Although I did, I want a, um, uh, you know those belt sander, like belt disc sanders that are have like a one inch wide belt on them. Yeah, the very thin. Belt yeah. Sander. Yeah. So as I was cutting this out, I was thinking, boy, that'd be handy to have for some of these thinner I- I- inner area parts. Yeah. And I, I used to have one, but I, I murdered it with. <laughs> there was an there was an incident. It died. So I went to Craigslist, or no, I could have gone to Craigslist and tried to find one, but instead I was like, Amazon, can I get that tomorrow? And Amazon (laughs) was like, you sure can. So I have a belt sander coming, it'll be here tomorrow. (laughs) That got addictive for me real quick when I was like, it can be here tomorrow? Oh, this is, and there's been many of i I'm just going to get it for tomorrow. Yep, yep, sure, why not? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, This one comes from Jeremiah. Uh, let's see here. I just did my first foam armor costume build. Yay, foam! Awesome. He's better than War Chief. I wore it to Colossal Con and sweat all over. Is there any sp- <laughs> anything specific you do to clean your armor when you take it off after a long day at the con? <laughs> just wearing it, just if you're at the hotel, just just throw yourself into the pool. Just right in. <laughs> Chlorine, you'll be fine. Be no, I've never done that. Uh, I've cleaned actual like costume stuff with a material called Endback, and it, what Endback is, it's, it's um, what, uh, what are they called? The, the laundry mats, the uh, dry cleaners. The dry cleaners use it to basically disinfect uh, clothes before they run it through the machine, and it's just a, a can spray, you know. Um, What's it called? Endback. Like E N D B A C K. Any idea? Uh, I, that's it in a chat. Oh, cool. I joined really fast, so I didn't. So uh, you say dry cleaners use it? Yeah. Cool. I know I've heard of people uh, end back liquid disinfectant. Cool. I've heard of people using like vodka and water. Like that's a down. pretty common one too. It's just yeah. a really diluted vodka. It kind of just kills everything. Right. And by the way, if you're at the convention at a hotel, you may already have vodka on hand. (laughs) Cool. Johnson Wax Professional. Those are both good. (laughs) I definitely, whatever I wear under my costume gets hung up 
uh, sprayed with, what do you call it, either something like that or Febreze. Yeah. And hung up. Definitely yeah. hang it up so that it dries. Yep. There's nothing worse than, like, the next day slipping into a costume <laughs> that's still wet with your own sweat. Oh, it's so gross. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, and then the you can also get, like, those disinfectant wipes just for cleaning yeah. off, like, your hands and stuff. Uh, if you The inside of your armor can get padded down with those, too. Yeah. Because um, that, that surface can get pretty gross, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use I, I bring like three things of baby wipes. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. By the stack, you know, and you just wipe everything down with them. Um, I used to do like a like paper towels and 99% alcohol, but if you've got anything hot glued, it instantly destroys the hot glue. Oh, that is so that's I a very problem. recommend not doing that. <laughs> cool. All right, awesome. Well, there you go. Stay. I'm I'm glad to hear that the people uh, watching, especially Jeremiah here, are concerned about their own personal hygiene yes. when they're at a convention. Yes. Stay clean. Stay hydrated. All right. Here we go. Let's uh, let's grab another one from Hunter. This one is uh, just wondering how you join multi-part resin kits together. How do you how do you adhere oh. them? Do you have a preferred method for something like that? I, when we talk resin, generally I think like a polyurethane plastic resin. Yeah. Uh, just a regular resin. I and uh, I was talking about this the other day. I love – I start with super glue, mm -hmm. like cyanoacrylate glue, and I go from there. Yeah. Like if that didn't stick, then I'll go to like an epoxy, you know, like five-minute epoxy, one-minute epoxy. But usually it's just cyanoacrylate glue, and I use the green stuff, uh, Zapagap. Yep. And that's you get that really, spray. Yeah, the little spray. Um, the spray is good if you're nowhere near the outside of your piece, because the it will craze it, which means it like makes it just gross and hard to sand. Mm -hmm. um, if you have really big gaps to fill, is you take some of that CA glue, uh, squirt it in a little cup, and add baby powder to it, and it turns it into a paste. Ooh. So you can kind of use it like a gap filler. That's a, I like that one right there. Um, I know our our buddy um, Xander from Z Props loves his super glue. He'll take just dust from like like when you're sanding. Yeah. Um, lots of the plastic, just take plastic dust and do the same thing. Yeah, just a thickener. Yep, anything to thicken it up. Ah, there's a fly just assaulted me. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, I'm I'm in the, the same boat. If you have any pieces that are kind of big, I recommend putting pegs in yeah. to hold hold them in place. Um, this giant rifle I'm doing, I imagine, is going to be held together in some spots with some big big old metal like aluminum rods to hold them together or threaded steel rods. Yep, pretty good for that too. If anybody is interested in the the methodology behind pinning stuff, look up pinning for miniatures. Ooh. It, they describe very, very in detail how to pin and be very precise about it. So I just look like um, how to pin a miniature. It looks like there's a bunch of stuff on the old YouTube. Yeah, and then you just blow it up, you know, to the size you need. Um, that way, I found following how those guys did it is usually if there's not a pre-existing pin, it works very well. Awesome, cool. Well, there you go, Hunter. Some uh, some tips for you there. All right. Good questions coming in, you guys. Let's grab another one here. Uh, this one, this one is from Matt, a, lo a Seattle local here, and he wants to know: Have you ever tried to carve EVA on your lathe? I have not. <laughs> I have a feeling that would go pretty poorly. Yeah. Since I wonder if you could barge it into a tube and then use sanding sponges to kind of make something, but that mm -hmm. I've never seen it. No. It would be interesting to try. It would be. I'm trying to think. Now, I've seen, I saw someone, and this seemed, this terrified me. This was frightening. <laughs> but a dude made a lathe. Um, it's kind of like a sled for your table saw, right? You put a sled on, like a crosscut sled. Yeah. Except that he made a lathe bit in there that was powered by his power drill. Whoa. Okay. And it could, it could go up and down, 
but the other end was it spun on it. Yeah. So the the he put a, a rectangular dowel yeah. in there, and then he spun. I'll have to find this video. <laughs> Rit, Rit's watching. If you can find this video, or remind me to find the video. I'll put a link in the show notes. And he spun the lathe. So the, uh, the the dowel was spinning, and then he dropped it, and then pushed the sled across the, the blade on the table saw. Whoa. And so the piece was spinning this way, the blade was spinning the way it's normally supposed to, and he cut out, like, a, a banister leg that way. That sounds ridiculous. It but does, but it I've works. Seen, just... like, those woodworking guys, I've magic yeah. some of it. So I bet, anyway... More to my point, I bet you could do something like that out of EVA. Yeah. Because <laughs> then the tool, the cutting tool, the blade yeah. is moving as well. Yeah. So maybe if you had, like, uh, like your Dremel as your cutting tool. Yeah. I don't know. It, it does all sound like a big old mess. But I'll tell you what, Matt. <laughs> if you try it, you let me know how it goes. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've been on the hunt for just tubes of EVA foam like pre-made tubes, mm -hmm. you know, and I've still not been able to find it. Like, I've even, like, tried to find a manufacturer of EVA yeah. to see if they could actually, like, uh, provide it, and it's still... Because imagine having EVA tubes. Right. I generally find them as in um, flat sheets. I found a yoga block, though. I've got yep. one over there. Um, that's, like, yay big of L400. It's, okay. like, more dense. Um, again, not a tube, yeah. But you could make it into a tube. Yeah. And then at Michael's they had um, little pieces of EVA that were, they looked like marshmallows. Okay. Like they could easily be mistaken for marshmallows. <laughs> um, so they're kind of small. They were cylindrical. I don't know what you would use them for. Yeah. Other than practical jokes, which is immediately <laughs> where I went. <laughs> so there you go. All right, Matt, good luck with your lathing EVA. Tell me how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Here's another one. This is from uh, Sam. This sounds relevant to my interests. He says, I'm currently working on a warlock from Destiny. Yes. He'd like to make the Death Slinger's Mantle. I'm going to look that up. Death Slinger Mantle. Awesome. And that appears to be uh, a hat, a mantle. Is that a head? It's a chest. Chess piece. All right, cool. I got a picture right here. All right, there it is. The Death, Death Singer's Mantle. Is that what we're going for? Yeah, Death Singer's Mantle. That's pretty cool looking. Yeah. Yeah, all right. The question is, I'd like to make, uh, or any tips on how to make the monstrosity of a collar stand up? Oh, there's this wacky big collar thing. Yeah. This picture isn't really doing it any justice. Let's go. Oh, I, you know what? Who? Someone had this. One of my buddies had this and then looked ridiculous. There we go. That yeah. is a that is a crazy color. All right, ideas. Hmm. I would probably make it all out of foam. That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say foam, and then if you wanted the the color to be fabric, just coat the foam in fabric. You could totally do that. Um, I would also do. You've got those ridges going along it. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Oops. There it goes. <laughs> In. There are these sort of ridges that go along it. So you yeah. could cut these strips of, out of strips of foam and then glue them together. And if you get the seams right, it'll have that sort of curved in look. You're going to have yeah. to do a lot of, t lot of trial and error to get it just right. But you could, you, could totally, excuse me, you could totally do that. It would work. Yeah. But you, and the good news is you only have to do half of it. And then you can mirror your templates and do the other half. Yeah. Piece of cake, no problem. <laughs> if Go you finish it, it, send pictures to uh, Janus Concepts on Facebook because I'm obsessed with warlock costumes at the moment. Yes, oh, totally. I just started playing, like, my Titan is my first love, but yeah. I have a warlock too. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit, what did I hit, like level 30 or something yesterday. Yeah. And they're kind of fun, I guess. Yeah. I started with a hunter, and I was kind of like, ah, oh, whatever. And then I did a warlock, and I was like, yeah, this is this is my jam. Yeah, I still, still, Titan is still favorite. Unfortunately, right now, my Titan looks like a, a hobo. <laughs> just, just, st I'm not 
really in love with the Titan armor choices they went with this DLC. Not Is that really. are you talking about the one with all the grenades and all of the ammo on it? I have that one, yeah, the uh, armamentarium. But I have the helmet with wings on it. Oh, it just right. looks like the tail of a plane. Yeah, it's like <laughs> this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this has been Destiny Talk here on Pop Live. Uh, there you go, Sam. Just make that Colorado foam. Good luck. All right. And if you make it, I want to see it too. <laughs> this next one comes from Richard. He says he's been asked to do a commission of the 1995 Judge Dredd film. Uh, I'm guessing costume, but I'm struggling on the price. I know what I think it's worth, but it just seems so high, I'm worried about pricing myself out of a job. Any suggestions? It's, you're probably gonna, it's probably going to be high. That's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be high. I mean, for as cheesy as that movie is and the cod piece, it's, it's actually not a bad costume. You mm-hmm. know, the, the shoulder pieces, I, I always, when I saw it as a kid, I was like, that is so cool. You know, um, I always try to think of, like, how many weeks it's going to take me. Yeah. You know? Um... And if it seems kind of high, it's, you know. I am probably, uh, I'm willing to bet that I have under underestimated just about every commission I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> and that's no joke. I'm pretty sure most of the things I've done, like, not by a lot, and I've gotten a lot better at it, but just about every commission i finished, I'm like, mm, probably should have asked for a little more. Because every project tends to take a little bit longer than you think it might. Yes. Oh, is this thing not loading? I'm trying to get a Judge Dredd picture up, but it went sent me to Photo Bucket. Who uses Photo Bucket anymore? <laughs> Come on! And that's a tiny picture. But here we go. This is the Judge Dredd costume. There's a lot. Of, it's one of those costumes you look at it and you're like, oh, I could, I could, I kind of get it. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot of intricacy there. There's a lot of work to put into that. Oh, it's tiny on the screen. Can I zoom in? There it is. I am the law. I am the law. There you go. Um, I will also say, too, that sometimes pricing yourself out of a job can be the best thing that you do. Because if you're not going to make what it's worth to do it, then don't do it. Yes, completely agree. If it starts looking really expensive and it looks like a lot of work that you're really on the fence about, like, don't be afraid to not take a job. Mm -hmm. Saying no is the best thing you can learn as a commission artist. That is well put. Good words. Oh, you just sent me a picture of Judge Dredd. Yeah. Equally. Oh, oh there, this one has the cod piece. Hold on. Let's swap. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Look at that. Oh, it's glorious. Oh, yeah. I will say the undersuit is a little bit plain. Yeah. So that's not that bad. But you got those gauntlets. You got the guns. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. There you go. All right. There you go, Richard. Good luck uh, with your pricing and your commissioning. And just remember, there will always be other jobs, so don't kill yourself over this one. Yeah. All right. This next one here comes from Danae. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Foam question here. Yes. What is your preferred method of smoothing gaps and seams in a messy joint? I'm making my first piece of armor, and I need to make it fairly seamless. That's... That's tough. We get this question pretty regularly. Um, you mentioned, I remember you telling us about something for floating foam. There, there it is. Yeah. Uh, tell us about FlexBond. FlexBond is a, um, it's a scenic glue that you can get at a, you can actually get it on Amazon right now, I believe. And uh, the guys at Legacy Effects and whatnot, they've been using it to coat all of their foam stuff. And you can actually add cornstarch to it and make it, use it as a gap filler, and it sands beautifully. Um, I've used that several times to great lengths. Um, see if I can find a picture to bring stuff up, and it saved me because when I first started messing around with like EVA foam, I I had horrible seams, you know. Right. For me, I know that the um, most of the work I've I've done with foam, the most improvement I've made is making seams really, really close. Yeah. Really good. Now I will say it is really tricky to get your foam seams to be perfectly seamless. Yeah. 
I think perfectly seamless is in um, an unrealistic expectation out of the material. Yeah. You can't fill it and sand it the way you would something rigid with like Bondo. Yeah. So just keep always keep that in mind with foam. Yeah, there's always going to be a seam, and if you think about how you're constructed, maybe if that seam you don't want to be seen, it's hidden underneath something. Yeah, I'll even do, like, I'll alter the design of something. If I'm building a costume from a video game, I'm like, there's already, like, filigree and stuff on this shoulder piece, so what if there's a little extra over yeah. where the seam is? A little something. I've noticed coming from video games to real life, there's a lot of, uh, I'm going to have to fudge this a bit to make it work. Definitely. Um, I did, one of the first foam armor builds I did was a demon hunter from Diablo 3. And I'm going to look it up here. I don't have a lot of in-progress photos. However, the shoulder piece, this really wacky shoulder piece, let me see if I can fire it up. There's a pretty good picture. Um... There it is. Go internet. All right. So this wacky shoulder thing right here. Yeah. Like this seam right here. These this top part is two pieces of foam. That's it. With a really crazy looking seam between the two of them. Yeah. And this was before I knew about contact cement. So I super glued that together. <laughs> like crazy. Yeah. And the seam under there is a nightmare. Yeah. Like just <laughs> crusty bits of super glue holding it together and then I just took a strip of foam, glued it over there, can't even tell. Done. Yep. Yeah. So that's usually what I re recommend to folks. And a lot of times you do something like that, it, it might just add that extra like cool factor. Right, you know? right, right. A little extra detail. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. There's some suggestions for you, uh, Dene. All right. This next one here comes from Emily. Since Brit's uh, live props, I was wondering if you ever use a vinyl cutter to cut papakura or hard... Oh, uh, Brit did a... Um, what was it? She did a live stream where she was working on her Vex Goblin. Awesome. More Destiny stuff. Um, you, I know you can use... I have a vinyl cutter, and I know you can use it to cut out papakura. I haven't tried it yet, though. But I know you can. Hmm. And it seems like something I ought to figure out how to do because yeah. cutting out peppercura by hand can be a pain. I've never done peppercura. Yeah. I've like I usually I approach stuff with the either build it out of foam and then bondo over it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um Britt's been working with it. Brittany is a, a very um, well versed 3D modeler. Yeah. So she's working on this guy behind me here. <laughs> Actually, let me grab it. One quick second. So if you can 3D model like normal polygon modeling uh, and you need to get like in a cool looking organic shape, uh, Peppercure is a great way to get to there. And yeah. that's that's a super cool looking skull thing and it's most yeah. of the way there. It's going to get fiberglass so it's nice and rigid and then fared out with Bondo and looking all nice and smooth. And then it's going to be um, uh, molded and cast. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if you have access to the PEP files or if you can model them yourself, then totally go for it. And maybe I'll try and make <laughs> Brick cut these all out by hand. You can see, like, the like the forehead thing got really, really intricate in there. Oh, man. And it took quite a while. And is that uh, cardstock? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So not yet, Emily, but soon maybe we'll give that a try. All right. Cool. Uh, here's one. This is from Dave, Fuzro Dave, who I just saw in New York City. He did my foam weapon making uh, uh, class, which was really fun. He says he wants to make an axe. He came across, uh, but the blade is over four feet, and I only have access to foam floor mats. What's the best way to join them to make sure they don't fall apart? He's never made anything uh, larger than one foam floor mat sheet. That is That can be tricky. Um, this may be a case where you end up having to hide a lot of seams where you like seam two pieces of foam together because you can make your own giant sheets of foam for sure yeah. just by, by gluing floor mats together but you may have to do that in a creative way Yeah. to hide where the, all of those seams go yep. 
Um, you, I mean, I imagine your solution, Steve, would probably be, oh, just go get a big roll of L200. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well, I... I that's what I would do. I've always wondered if you can get a big roll of EVA. That's right. just free cut, you know. Uh, um, there's there's lots of different, uh, like, there's this stuff called pla- uh, plastazote uh, mm-hmm. that comes in different densities. The LD45 is the one I like. And a lot of those companies, they build out uh, their foam for, like, manufacturing or for um, packaging yep. stuff. So you can get those big things. You just use, usually have to buy them in, like, they won't do an order less than less than like three or four hundred dollars. So you have yeah. to order a lot all at once yeah. because they they sell stuff to distributors and to manufacturers. Right. So Dave, if you want to get into that, you can look into ordering um, either stuff from Foam Mart, which is the place that in LA yeah. that sells the L two hundred. They have a store on Amazon now. Or uh, look around, look for manufacturers maybe in your area that sell foam, different types of foam for packaging. Yep. And I'm pretty sure Dave's near New York City, so you might have some options there. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, start gluing foam floor mats together. <laughs> yep, and just keep it tight, and then if you need to hide it, add something on top. Yeah. That's about it's, all you can do. Yeah, and if you're doing, if that's the solution you're going with, then planning, a lot of planning steps are going to help you out yeah. for sure. All right, good luck, Dave. Good luck, sir. <laughs> All right, this next one here comes from Eric. Uh, he says he's looking to make Lightning's sunglasses from Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, can't seem to figure out where to start first. All right, let's look up uh, Lightning sunglasses. Or Lightning, let's see, Final Fantasy XIII. And then the character was Lightning. Lightning Returns. Cool. Oh, those are fancy. But your your Google flu is faster than mine. <laughs> Lightning Returns. Uh, sunglasses. Let's look that up, too. Okay, cool. So I'm start like, immediately when I think sunglasses or visors and stuff, I, I tend to go with, well, can we get these pre-made? Do these yeah. already exist? Actually, here's, what's this? This is a cosplay thing. Maybe someone's selling them. It's an eBay thing. Hmm. Cosplay holic. Yeah, someone's selling them, $110. There you go. Now, something I found out recently is the glass in cheap sunglasses, kind of like these, which I just got off of Amazon, the glass in it is not glass. It's just plastic Mm -hmm. and is highly dremmable, and you can actually still get a glass finish on it after you dremel it. Yeah. If you're going to do that, I would cover the whole thing in masking tape, and then you you can draw this new shape you want on it, and then you can Dremel it, and the masking tape will protect it from getting scratched. Yep. You know, and uh, then you can uh, you can build the frames and everything out of uh, styrene or you know any type of small building material. Because um, I'm actually altering these glasses for a Shadowrunner look, and I'm gonna build all the new frame out of uh, styrene that you can get from a local hobby shop. Right. Um, yeah, those are some wacky glasses there. <laughs> I wonder if you could um, if you could get a pair of sunglasses that are kind of close and then like heat shape them. Yeah. To get the uh, the look. It really depends on whatever they're made out of, whether or not they'll take two shaping with yep. heat. But if they're ABS plastic, it should work just fine. Yeah. And don't go be get... afraid to go down to a gas station, buy a three dollar pair of sunglasses, and see what you can do with them. You know, with what you have. If you've got a Dremel, mm-hmm. see if you can. Dremel into it if you can heat shape it. See what the what the existing object can do for you. Definitely, um, and look too. I think like some of these, uh, like this, looks like one that someone worked on here. Um, other people seem to be tackling this problem too, so you're not alone. Go see what yeah. other solutions. Uh, so this one, lightning the artist dot dot com. This is one that looks like someone did. So. Go see how they did it. Go ask them. Yeah. The answers are out there. <laughs> the, 
The power of Google. The truth is out there. What was the X-Files? What did they say? I don't remember. But they're making a new one, apparently. Yes. And I'm on board. The truth is out there. The truth is out there. All right. Here's another one from Don't Try This at Home. Uh, it's been a while since you made the pumpkin pie video describing how your week as a prop maker goes. How has it changed since? What's an average day in the life of like now? The pumpkin pie video will link in the description. I basically described like the eight hours of my day as eight slices of pumpkin pie and how those all get spent on non-prop making things, <laughs> which is kind of wacky because that's... Because I'm, I wanted to be a prop maker, and I don't. And some days I don't do a lot of prop making. <laughs> the joys uh, of being freelance. Yes, definitely. Um, I'll say that it's not every day is like that. Um, for example, tomorrow I plan on spending from about 9 a.m. until about 9 p.m. working on this gun, like 12 straight hours of cutting out wood. That's my yeah. plan for tomorrow, and I'm going to ignore my email. <laughs> <laughs> And if someone calls me, then I'll probably answer it, but that's a flip of a coin. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it really depends. Like, my goal is to get to a point where I do more prop making every single day, but that means automating a lot of the other stuff in my life, which generally means investing money in those other things. Uh, for example, I recently uh, just, uh, at the beginning of this year, I hired a bookkeeping company to handle all of my accounting for me. And it's a little pricey, but it's done and I don't have to look at it. Yeah. I get a I get an email once a month. They have a they're like, "Hey, we have a couple questions about some expenses here. Could you take a look at them?" 5 minutes later, done. My accounting for the month, done. That so, is cool. yeah. But it, what it took was me busting my butt for 3 years to be able to afford to pay someone else to do that. Right. <laughs> yes. How about you, Steve? <laughs> what's a what's a day in the life of Steve like? It depends on uh, what's going on. Like uh, right now, since I'm on Grey's Anatomy, I'm in by eight o'clock. I'm out about I'm out around four or five o'clock, and then um, then I come home and I immediately use what energy I have to keep whatever I'm working on in the garage. So usually right. another two hours in the garage, and then uh, it's sitting down and trying to do more of the books and whatnot. You know, mm -hmm. the uh, the build a path. Yes. And uh, But yeah, that's usually it, and then if I'm not on a job, it's usually a couple days of, I'm just going to hang out and watch Firefly, or it's, uh, hey, I'm just going to spend 12 days, or 12 hours in the garage, yeah, just working on stuff. So. And what are you working on in the garage these days? Um, I am working on the Ram helmet from Destiny. That's right. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's just called the Ram. I'm going to look up a picture of that. And... Uh, Brittany, That's a Warlock Austin, helmet, Sydney. right? What's that? That's the Warlock helmet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Check this out. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. It works That's because cool. I have um, molds of authentic ram horns that look just like that. That is mighty handy. And I was like, that, I think I'm going to do this. And um, I'm also working on a Witcher costume that is not very... Uh, it's not the Witcher. It's um, just my own... If I was a Witcher, right? For you a are. event called Labyrinth of Jareth. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I've heard about that one. Yeah, so, that would fit in, in pretty well there. Yeah. So if uh, anybody remembers the Assassin of Kings from Witcher Two, it's a lot more like that. He's right. a bigger guy with the shaved head, so it kind of works. Perfect. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's about it. Um, cool, man. Yeah, I don't have any commissions going right now, so it's kind of nice to just work on the stuff that I want to work on. That That is a nice thing, isn't it? And sometimes, yeah. like, I always try, like, this this rifle project I'm doing for Tested uh, was a perfect mashup of something that I totally would have wanted to do anyway. Oh, yeah. But that they were willing to pay for. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. do have um, a Go random, ahead. like, every once in a while I pick up a little bit of extra. I have a mold of Mad Max's armor parts from the original movie. Oh. So that'll randomly come out every once in a while. I'll get an order for that. But other mm -hmm. than that, that's kind of it. There you go. Uh, here we go. That was from Don't Try This at Home. Thank you. This next question comes from, let's go here, Courtney. 
Uh, let's see here. Do you guys have any recommendations for trying to be more green when making your props or costumes or running your shop? Uh, anything to reduce or minimize waste or environmental impact? <laughs> 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 Oof. All right. I try, like, look, I recycle, like, my home life, I'm really good about recycling. Yeah. <laughs> but in the shop, yeah, uh, it's pretty bad. The problem is we use a lot of consumables, mm -hmm. you know, cups, brushes, uh, tongue depressors and whatnot, and usually the chemical that you coat them in is not environmentally safe, so you can't right. pick and choose. And you, know? you can't use it again. Yeah, you, it's a one-time use thing, and then and then it's a biohazard. <laughs> you have to yeah. throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a. I really wish there was a green option, but right. yeah, a lot of the stuff it's like I yeah, I just have to bite the bullet. Right. Um, I do like anything that's a uh, like paints. Like if you ever mix paints and cups, uh, paper cups and stuff like that, uh, I try to stick to like uh, paper cups and whatnot that I can just throw away because they're not. And they're not environmentally environmental hazard. Like acrylics, you can just recycle and stuff right. like that. So other than that, it's kind of hard. Yeah, it's chaos. Yeah. It is. Generally, I will err on the side of whatever process or material gets the job done best the fastest. Yeah. Um, if I, I don't know. If I make other considerations, then I I'll, I just won't get the job done. It just yeah. won't happen, <laughs> unfortunately. And budget, yeah. like things just, yeah. Whether they cost too much to get the the greener solution. Yeah. Yes. So, so we don't, I don't do anything wasteful on purpose, but it's just kind of the nature of the beast. Exactly. Uh, funny story. When I worked at uh, Microsoft. We had, in, like, our cubicles, everyone had a recycle bin and a trash bin, and um, if you wanted to, you could, you could have a compost bin as well. Yeah. Um, so while, you, while I'm working, that goes in the trash. I finish a can of soda, that goes in the recycling. I have a banana peel, that goes in the compost thing. Right. And we could be really good about that. Yeah. And in the, like, mini... Um, uh, kitchen that's a, they would have the three different bins you could throw everything in so we're yeah. awesome Microsoft's being green fantastic <laughs> well I work I worked there at night when the cleaning staff came through mm -hmm. and I watched as the cleaning staff went to a cubicle picked up all three bins and just dumped them in the same <laughs> trash thing and like, oh come on <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah you try you, you try, try, try your best. you know all right here you, you know, go this one on for you for trying to be green. We tried. Yes, out there. Totally. Um, <laughs> this one is from Josh. He says, what foam do you recommend for making LARP weapons? If you have any experience with them, uh, I've tried EVA, but I find it too hard. Um, L200 is probably, it's a little bit yeah. softer than EVA, yeah. Well, the um, uh, Artifakes, who you visited in London, they do mm -hmm. a lot of LARP stuff. What did they yes. use? They use that Plastazote. Okay. And uh, like I said, you can get the LD45 is the standard stuff that I kind of yeah. like. Um, it comes in LD33 or something that's a little bit squishier. And yeah. then is up to like LD75, I think, which is really, really rigid. Yeah. Uh, kind of porous looking stuff. So again, there's different densities of foam you could try. Yeah. That are I have done squishier. for like Nerf Wars and stuff, I'll build something out of L200 and people don't seem to complain. <laughs> so. I take that as it's not too hard. Yeah. You could even do, like, upholstery foam, too. Yeah. If you have a big hammerhead, yeah. you just, just make it uh, out of upholstery foam. A really cool thing that I saw someone do for a Harley Quinn ha uh, hammer that they wanted to be able to bash people with is you just barge the whole thing. I'm making hand gestures off camera. I see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just roll up the foam, and you glue it as you go, and it kind of creates this swirl. Then you paint the swirl itself in like a red and white, so you kind of go with the anesthetic of the nice swirly looks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And they just did out a mattress foam, and yeah, it didn't hurt at all. Got the job so. done. There you go, Josh. A couple things for you to try out. All right, let's grab a couple more questions, and we're going to be done. Time's flying. That was fast. Yeah, this one's from Jason Lee, another regular. He says, hi there, when cutting foam with a knife, how do you handle interior angles where the corner is inset? I can't get a clean corner. That can be kind of tricky. 
Um, yeah. I I have one of these. I got it right in within hand. This is uh, like a curved. Um, put my hand there. A curved sculpting blade thingy. It's yeah. just like an exacto, a, a sharp exacto blade. Um, for doing interior cuts, like curves, this thing is really great. I end up sort of seesawing it or just sawing around curves. Yeah. Uh, and then cleaning it up later with like a Dremel. Yeah. But for angled stuff, I'll still use this thing too because the tip on it is so thin. Um, but the great thing about foam, and I've actually done this before with a bandsaw, since it's so pliable, like I was cutting a big piece of foam and it wouldn't fit in the bandsaw, so I just folded part of it over and then wedged it through the bandsaw. <laughs> like, you can just Done. manhandle it. Uh, so yeah. I'll take a piece like that and just fold it or bend it until I can get the knife to go into that little corner bit. Yep. Yeah. Something to check out for for you and maybe the people watching is a company called Micromark. Micromark. And they sell stuff for model makers, and they sell... Um, they sell different types of blades for their uh, refillable scalpels. And so you can get especially like weird blades that are as sharp as an exacto, if not more, that you can go in and get weird corners like that. Um, I, this, is, uh, this is relevant to my interest. Hand tools. Knives. Knives and handles. Knife blades. Oh, their website is wonderful. Check yeah. this out. So this is uh, Micromark, the small tool specialist. Oh, look how thin. That's like a super thin hobby blade. Damn it, Steve. I'm going to go buy. I just bought a tool today. I'm going to go buy all this <laughs> stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, there you go. There's a wonderful ex uh, example of some things you can uh, buy. Yeah, Just if you go down and you see number 12 scalpel blade uh, with the orange background, that I've used to get weird corners Ooh. like that, and it gets it rounded. Yeah, look at that. It looks like a talon, but uh, it's perfect for that because the curve kind of takes out what you want. Yes. Um, I don't know where you might get them. But a buddy of mine has has a scalpel blade where it's curved, like uh, if I turn the blade ninety degrees, it's curved. It's got a loop in it. Uh, I've seen people make those. Yeah, I'm thinking well, I might just have to take, make one. Um, have you ever seen the? Uh, I guess they're jeweler's pliers. They don't have any like uh, grip to them or whatever. They're right. just two, and you just take that and you just roll it, and you can just kind of roll it into a little loop. Yeah, and what he and this is totally unrelated to the question, but he uses it for cutting seams on molds. Yeah, because it puts a little loop into it. Yeah, it's cool. And it's actually, top over at Sorenzo Props. And I'm gonna go buy a bunch of these Exacto blades. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, Michael Mark actually has those pliers as well. If oh. anybody's interested in taking a look at them. They have a type of plier that you can literally put the exacto blade into, squeeze it, and it makes a half circle. Well, hot damn. That's so cool. Well, there's a that's a good one to end on. Everyone go to Michael Mark and just go buy a ton yeah. of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, thanks, Steve. Uh, no problem, man. Some really great info from you, and thanks for being here. I had yeah, fun. Man. Hope you had a good time. Anytime. Uh, thank you, everyone who came in, hanging out in the chat, asking these great questions uh, through the hangout thing. It's been a really fun show, and yeah. we'll do this again next week. We'll probably have Steve on again sometime. Awesome. Look forward to it, man. Next time you're in town, if we can get you to slum it up here in Seattle again. <laughs> I love it up there, for the record. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, so long, everyone. Uh, until next time, you go out there Adios. and make some stuff. Because now you know all the truths. True truths. Yes.